this is crazy. You must never, never do this again. Otherwise, you're fired. And um, Forsman didn't do it again, but he was very smart. He published a paper that described this. And that helped him, together with these two other gentlemen, win the Nobel Prize. So his contribution to the Nobel Prize was this daring experiment on himself. And these two uh, 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 gentlemen were professors at Columbia University. Andre Cournand, actually a French physiologist, pulmonary physiologist who emigrated to the United States in the 1930s, and Dickinson Richards, a, um, um, a senior professor of medicine. And they really brought cardiac catheterization in to the foreground. Okay, cardiac surgery, of course, a very important development in cardiology. Um, I think that when you hear a cardiac surgeon talk about this, they'll give you 10 things and they'll show one cardiology slide and say the cardiologists were there also. But um, here are two uh, men, Robert Gross, professor of um, surgery at Harvard Medical School, and he uh, did the first uh, cardiac operation, ligated a patent ductus in 1938. By the end of a year, he had done 100 cases without a fatality. John Gibbon, professor of surgery at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia, developed the heart-lung machine. And it was truly a genius kind of product because he built this in his own garage. We hear about geniuses who uh, build important things in their garage like uh, the computer or the uh, other great developments. Well, he did that with a heart-lung machine. And he operated on a 21-year-old um, woman with an atrial septic defect, the operation was successful, and the whole field just blossomed. Coronary angiography, Mason Soans at the Cleveland Clinic, director of the cardiac catheterization laboratory, was doing, this, this one is different from the others because this Maybe it's a little like force, but it was an accident. He was doing, he intended to do an aortogram, inject dye into the central aorta and look at all of the branches. And by mistake, he entered the coronary artery. And when he injected 60 milliliters of dye into the coronary artery, the patient's heart stopped, and his heart stopped. Fortunately for everybody, both hearts, after about 10 seconds, began to beat again, because this was an unconscionable amount of dye, about 10 times the dose. By that afternoon, he had done two more cases, and coronary angiography was born. Andreas Grudzik a German, Swiss, or Swiss-German, always get confused, uh, trained in cardiology. He trained in um, vascular disease and in radiology. Very young guy. Um, he was about uh, 30 after this training. He put these different disciplines together, and he developed the balloon angioplasty percutaneous coronary intervention. Of course, it has gone through many, many evolutionary stages. We have stents, we have drug-eluting stents, but this is the man who started it. And tragically, um, he uh, uh, was working at Emory University in Atlanta. He liked to fly planes, and uh, he flew into a storm with his wife, who was a uh, a, um, uh, a, a professor of pediatrics, and they were never heard from again. So it is a tragic, but he made this very big mark. 
Professor Chazov, Evgeny Chazov, a, obviously a uh, Russian, uh, and actually I was in Moscow last week and, and spent some time uh, with Chazov. Uh, he was, um, when he was the Deputy Minister of Health for the whole Soviet Union, he did a very important experiment. He injected streptokinase into the coronary artery. So here, you see the catheter, and here is the coronary artery, and you see it comes to a complete stop. That's the occlusion. The patient was having a heart attack. He injected this lytic substance, the first one ever to do that, and you can see how the blood vessel opens. And you even see the branches all the way out here. And this began the whole field of reperfusion of coronary arteries and has reduced the mortality uh, in half. By the way, Chazov went on, um, just as an aside, um, he became the full Minister of Health of uh, the Soviet Union. He um, um, was Brezhnev's doctor, and um, he, uh, he became very interested in stopping nuclear war, and he organized physicians. Both he and Bernard Laun, a cardiologist uh, in Boston, formed Physicians Against Nuclear War and they won the Nobel Peace Prize for this in 1986. So he was a very versatile, and is a very versatile person, very active right now. Here are cardiovascular drugs, and um, um, so if you take beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and statins together, it's fair to say that probably more than a billion people on Earth have been helped by these drugs. Beta blocker, James Black, Sir James Black, a Nobel Prize winner also, ACE inhibitors, Cushman and Undetti, and statins, Akiro Endo. Now, what is remarkable about this slide to me is that these four people all worked for industry. And we're going through a rough patch in our country in terms of the relationship between academia and industry. And those of us in academia 